No, I'm recording. Yay. No kick out. Um, so cool to see you in the flesh, man. Like, well, Can't video hear. flesh, you know. Kind of here. <laughs> um, thank you for doing this. I was listening. I, I've seen a whole bunch of your stuff. I follow your work on LinkedIn, but I took a listen, um, particularly to the podcast you recently did with the Deborah Blackett from Z Energy. Yep. Um, so some really nice pieces in there. And I caught up with Holly Bennett, who I know you deal with quite a bit. Um, yeah, Holly's awesome. Crazy, but awesome. Yeah. She, um, well, I introduced her to my nephew who now works with her. So. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. He's a, just an amazing young man and she's loving having him. So I just, I'm, yeah, really grateful that that worked out so well. Um, and heading along to their office opening in a couple of weeks. So there's, you know, like normal Kiwis do, we're always one degree of separation. Um, I get it. Yeah. So I, I don't know how much, you know, or don't know about this. My podcast is really about recruitment and career, but following some pretty spectacular career, journeys, the squiggly line, lessons, um, but from a Kiwi perspective, because I don't think, you know, like you're doing a great job of sharing those stories and, um, you know, I wanted to do some of the same when I pivoted from my last role into recruitment um, and yours is one I definitely wanted to be able to share and amplify a little bit um, sure. and just get to dig into myself because you're so freaking interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, not many people have been able to crack it. A couple of people had a good good chat, but every time they think they got it dialed, they're like, what? It's like, yeah. Uh, I world. just think we're all onions, right? Yeah. So there's no one it. way. Um, but yeah, fascinating. Well, um, we can go. So my I mean, ha- yeah, sorry, I've just got, um, I've got a hard stop in 55 minutes, but we can go for gold. Cool. Awesome. Easy. Um, so generally start off, uh, if you're comfortable, I'd love to do a collateral capture with you, just kind of saying who you are, what you do, that you're happy to be sure. a guest here on Rosie on Recruitment and Career, and what you're kind of going to share about. And then we can jump into some questions and some chats, if that's cool. For sure. Um, so where you go? Uh, could everybody, my name is Rebecca Hollis, and about to get into it with Rosie on Recruitment to talk about a whole bunch of good things let's get into it love it (laughs) let's get into it um i did a bit of a planned intro just around you know one of the things that strikes me is your authenticity your um real transparency around what you stand for and believe in and that is something that i'm heartened to see more companies embrace uh but definitely need some leaders out the front yeah, I was going to say, we need some more leaders out the front like you because it is it is the tall poppy syndrome. It's putting your head above the ground, right? Um, so I just wanted to start off with what does recruitment and career mean to you since that's what this potty is about? Career is yet undefined because it feels like the journey can't get put into one bucket. I always sort of feel, um, well, for starters, I'd obviously say that because I'm kind of um, – I'm unhirable, basically. I'm an HR nightmare. <laughs> but I do feel that um, I, I just hate the idea of a bucket. I hate the idea of yeah. a, t- a, a title defining a whole human's existence. I just don't, I kind of don't believe it. Like, I get career is what you do, but it's very loaded for me because I guess by, um, by you know, full conflict of interest, I have to feel a certain way about it because I haven't been able to get that. You know, like I haven't, um, mm. you know, I failed high school. I didn't get into, couldn't get into university, got no degrees, no anything. So I've kind of just, um, you know, navigated the free flowing world of, of life in my own journey. And it's actually, it's, I think it's worked out potentially better in many situations than if I had gone down a, another path of trying to, be a thing as a career or a thing. Now these goals and careers are different, but for me, it's just a little bit of a loaded question because I I just don't, I hate when people, you know, misplace position over a person because that doesn't define them of who they are and what they represent. So, you know, loaded question, sorry to start, but that's that's how I feel. (laughs) (laughs) No, I agree. I think um, a lot of people felt that way coming out of COVID. So I was disestablished during that period and I, you kind of get taken aback by understanding how deeply you tie your worth to 
what that title was or what you tried to achieve over two decades of working a particular way and ticking particular boxes and um, found a group of people that had been through similar instances. And it was one of the reasons I wanted to get into recruitment to really understand a, a whole person and, um, and show them, you know, I'd pivoted in my past too, just that that's possible. Like, what do you really want to do? It's a blank and canvas now, right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I think as well when your age changes and you're in different, or maybe not age changes, but maybe when you get into different phases of life, that same skill set skill set translates so differently. Like for example, yeah. you know, a pro athlete that's been at an elite level that transitions into business, they can fit really squarely into a bunch of different potential environments that have got nothing to do with their sport. But there's this underlying thing of whether it's teamwork or leadership or motivation or glue or drive or resilience, focus or whatever, whatever, mindset. resilience yeah. exactly, whatever it may be. So, you know, but then that changes as well as, you know, you, you know it's, it's like, um, you know, builders that start building at 15 and by the time they're 35, they need to transition to that next thing. They've still got the same skill sets, but, you know, it just phases changes. That's all. So I, I, I um. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the other things that I feel is, you know, the same skill set in an individual at a different phase in their life can mean two totally different things, and that's totally okay. Yeah, it's funny, it segues very nicely into my next question, which which focuses you really on this piece. So you grew up in a farm in Dargaville, which I thought was cool. I had I had dairy farmer friends in Matakaui, so you probably know uh, where that is, where most in the country might not. Um, you were in Fiji, then Aranui Christchurch, represented New Zealand in both basketball and soccer. As you mentioned, you failed high school and traveled the world as a professional snowboarder. How did all of that prepare you specifically to transition into business? I know we talked about that skill transfer, but what did you take from that? There's one line from Jay-Z and it's, I ain't a business, man. I'm a business, man. <laughs> and nice. what it is for my head was, I'm not a businessman, which is one-to-one -one unscalable time. I'm a business yeah. man. I'm a full platform, scalable entity that can make money while I sleep, that can have different things rolling in a bunch of different, you know, flows all over the show. And so for me, it was mm. just changing the headspace of how I felt about um, and, and for me, when I was in snowboard world, I remember distinctly at 20 being like, I don't want to be 30 and having to jump off a flipping cliff to pay my rent. You know, like when you're a pro yeah. snowboarder at the um, time in that world, um, every day you almost die. And something that always sort of freaked me out a little bit was this idea of, well, I'm kind of at the mercy of, I'm rolling the dice every single day with my own future. Is that, do I want... Yeah. To have control of not that you can't control business but you know you, you roll the dice in, in other ways but at least physically there's more safety and security um so that's mm. something that i'd always been like i've um i've always played chess so chess is a big kind of thing for me um yeah and so i think about i've thought since i was you know 12 or 13 when i started getting into it long game five ten right. moves ahead like what's the play what's the play how does this position where does that go what happens there with either relationships or opportunities or whatever it may be and that's one of the potentially the maybe the biggest disconnects of those that either think they know me or, or know me or whatever is they don't realize how i'm thinking about things because we don't i guess have yeah. the opportunities for conversations like this but you know when you think about when i think about um the long game on things then time everything sort of changes a, a lot differently. And so that's probably one of the biggest drivers that helped me, I guess, transition across because before I actually peaked, I had already made the commitment to, to bail out and get into business. I got um, yeah. a, silver, a silver medal at the, the world finals for snowboarding. Before the competition, I told two people that I was going to, regardless of the outcome, I was going to retire and bail. And they thought I was flipping yeah. nuts. And then I got silver. <laughs> Everyone thought I was about to go in. And I was like, who's, I'm out. Nah. And they're like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> um, you know, and so, but that's the thing, you know, you've got to, um, that I said, so maybe, um, vision or preparation or, or mindset, or whatever is probably one of the, the biggest sort of skill sets that helped me transition across. Cause I was, I was thinking 10 moves ahead. Like right now, my brain's not even at 36. My brain's at 56, 60, 50, 70, yeah. maybe like I'm already, so, I guess that that makes me wonder because I know you're involved in so many things. So is that because you're agile and you're continuing to change or because opportunities, you know, new ones come up, but it's hard to let some of those that you're already involved with go. What's that process for you? 
it's it's got better over time um i'm trying to think of it like shotgun to sniper so when you're in your early 20s you want to do right. everything you try and shoot everything yep. in one hit and then you know you realize he's yeah, shotgunning right now I get, I get yep. you. <laughs> and then i'm trying to snipe it down of like all right cool now this thing can pop or that thing whatever and then it becomes around um you know you've only got a certain amount of time in the day and then what's mm. going to be the biggest um the biggest win for you with that time you know commercially culturally for um, community for others for charity for what you know then it becomes prioritizing that thing because you could and recently i had to drop let go of one project but i loved it it was great but the amount of energy and effort to get this single one income i could probably do the same thing in one day over there and it's like well yeah in terms of your time you sort of get to a spot and you start thinking about how you want to deploy that energy or that that kind of that time capital and so i started i've sort of started to transition my environment around okay well I'm, let me reverse engineer what i want to do with my time first and then how do i yeah, fill those sure. gaps and then so i'm kind of yeah. i guess now um playing a bit of chess on how i play this next this next phase out till i'm 50. yeah um because you know i've got a young family two daughters under three that's my priority yes. of any of this other shit. so i'm just kind of like all right well what i do in the middle is is up to me but so i better make it count <laughs> Yeah, I um, that's such an interesting piece because I think I, I deal with a lot of graduates or new to work people, and part of that is experience, right? So going out and shotgunning, but I found that I've done that at various stages in my career because I've pivoted. I love to learn and I love to connect with people. So you go out and you kind of get all this experience, but then it's snipering down. So it is the that kind of out and in. And those experiences do enrich you. Um and sometimes you just you get something from them that is not commercial. Um it, it, it might not pay off for 10 or 20 years. It might only pay off in one project in the future, but it's still made an imprint on you, right? Totally, hundred percent. Yeah. You tackle some pretty big topics in your conversations, um, from business success through to things like domestic violence. So why is this type of conversation transparency important to you? It's a great question. Um, I feel it is important to talk about the uncomfortable thing first, um, mm. in public because it empowers others to potentially do the same. And usually people don't have, the tougher conversations or braver conversations in public because they are fearful about yeah. it's um it's like a beefed up version of why ceos or big leaders at businesses don't really comment with their own personal opinions on anything to do with on social media because it may not be an accurate representation of the business so there is a risk for them mm -hmm. to have a personal opinion which is the most stupid shit ever right because that's yeah titles are temp titles are temporary we're all humans but yeah but i then feel when it comes to tougher things um people have too much people instantly default to let's not do that because they're afraid of the the tougher honesty that will come out the other side or the potential liability that comes out the side or the HR that comes out the other side or whatever. It's never that they don't feel it. It's always that yeah. um, they don't have enough bravery to do it. And so I will know things pop most of the time as if something's really gnarly in particular, I'll, I'll say it. Mm. There's piss or likes or comments on it, but there's yeah. heaps of views. Oh, that frustrates me. Yeah, yeah. And so then I'm like, okay, so you've engaged with it because you know what's up, but then what happens is the back channels pop, so you get messages or texts or calls or yeah. emails or um, private messages yeah. and whatever, and all of it. And so f every time that happens, I know it resonates because all I'm sort of saying is I just want others to be braver. I want them to be mm. braver to have that conversation. Like, because whether they're right or wrong, that's their truth. You know, like recently there's some yeah. other stuff popped up and people just were going hard. I'm like, cool. Well, that's how they feel great, but that's that, that's their truth. Like, fine. Like, mm. cool. You may be a flipping Muppet and you're an idiot. Fine. But that's your truth right now. Yeah. You know? And so, that's, yeah. that, so for me, I kind of, you know, I, I think also when you can stand in a room and you don't need anything from anyone genuinely, anything you say is going to be usually held with more either respect or, or actually more listened to because there's not a conflict of interest of a, a power dynamic where something needs someone from the other side. It's just genuinely like, this is me. This is what I think the views may and probably will change over the time. And mine definitely mm. have over the last 15 years and they will continue yeah. to. But part of the reason for me anyway, is if I'm long game in it and I've got thoughts about things and society ends up adapting and changing to it, selfishly 
I'm just getting to be historically correct time and time and time and time again. So my yeah. children's children, when they look through Facebook in 2100 or whatever it may be, they can see exactly what I thought about the exact same time. And they thought the insights of what culture was like in community yeah. and commerce and exactly what the take. And I think part of me doing what I'm doing isn't actually about me. It's like yeah, documenting right. our world right now. And it's then been the conduit for others' thoughts of that thing. And then just like yeah, right now, if I could, could you, could you imagine going back and, and being like 1912 and watching a Facebook video <laughs> of your 20 year old grandparents, like talking about, oh man, this flipping, this, this AM radio is the shit. And oh man, they've got this talk back, like we're just, you know, documenting life, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I just sort of feel that, you know, we're documenting the future learnings for others. And for me, I think, you know, this may get played in a hundred years and it's still going to be there. So that's cool for me. Yeah, I think so too. It's um, a representation and you want to be on the right side of that with your values and beliefs. Um, that fear well, piece exposes, is really important. It yeah. exposes everyone if, if it's not, right? So yeah, sorry, fear piece. It does. Yeah. Um, so that fear piece what do you want to do? Like, what would you say? How would you shake up some of those CEOs to, to get over that? Cause some people are doing this successfully. I love um, how honest Rob Campbell is. He's been on my potty. Um, he's, <laughs> he says some stuff, which I just think a lot of other people, uh, again, too fearful to say. And that's what I love about your sharing. It's authentic. It's to the point. Um, it doesn't fluff around. So how can people start to speak their truth with more, more honesty? <laughs> Well, the, the Rob's a very, we're, we're both very similar where we're at a point where we can genuinely say what we think and not that it can't like say with Rob, the ramifications no are different possibly. No one's questioning shit about Rob because everyone that <laughs> yeah. would is like True. everyone that could say anything about him would be those that haven't done what he's done that look like yeah. him, that want to be him, that actually aspire to be him yet, but haven't. So they totally. don't have the right to that opinion because they haven't done what he's done. So shut your face. Yeah. And so yeah. he already wins by default before it, because whatever he says, unless it's someone who's done the same or more with more credibility or whatever, which is not many, I'm not saying he wins yeah. by default, but he's sort of won the game where he's like, come up the chain through all he's the bullshit. That talk. And it, yeah. And he's got to the top and he's like, cool. And now I'm here with my, my power and this is my thoughts and opinions on it. And he, and he flipping says it. And that's the coolest shit about him. And so me and Rob yeah. are real close. And I love it that he um, he knows as well. I, I texted him the other day randomly. I said, do you have advisors at this point in your life? Like, you're like 60 or 70 yeah. or some shit, right? Like, do you have advisors? And yeah. he goes, nope, I roll solo. And I'm like, well. <laughs> and then I kind of said to him too, I was like, well, I guess it'd be tricky to listen to some like, because for me to listen to him, that's a mentor, right? Because yeah. he's, you know, 20, 30 years ahead of my game. I'm the young buck still on the come up, blah, blah, blah. I know how the game works. But for him, and I said to him, I was like, what? So I guess you're not like asking 95-year-olds in the rest time about cryptocurrency <laughs> and what they should do for the future of finance. And then he goes, um, he's like, it's not that I choose. It's like, it's that I choose not to listen. It's like, I could, but I won't. And so it was yeah. just like, you know, he's just got to, to spot his content. And so to rewind it back, the difference that they have is leverage. You know, yes, yes. Like he, he has, he has leverage to be able to say that thing because he's done it. And I was talking on, the, I had, there's this young buck entrepreneur who's gone through some shit recently and he's gone through a bad little spot and he rung me up, um, mm. uh, had a chat with him yesterday. And I said, look, you know, you're a young buck, you're doing some dumb shit, you're burning bridges, whatever it's like. You can, you're going to have to try and obviously mend those and it's not, you're not, going to mend them yeah. through just, you're not going to mend them through talking. You're going to mend it through earning your way back through, through, actions, through success, yeah. through actions. Right. Um, but there's a, there's, in my sort of head, when I was sort of thinking about saying his scenario is, you know, he, he hasn't executed anything yet because mm. he's just, he's a young buck talking shit that hasn't done anything. So shut your face. Yeah. The difference is if you can talk the shit and actually then have done some stuff, then it's yeah. like, you know, for me, when my um, me media company Frontside was acquired by Saatchi and Saatchi, one of my advisors yeah. said the first thing to me, he goes, look, everyone now knows you're crazy, but not nuts. And there's a difference. Yes. Because you can't, there's, you a can't line, have done yeah. what you've, there's a line and you can't have done what you've done if you were nuts. You can still be crazy. Yeah. So now you're crazy, but not nuts. And there's, then you're yeah. more lethal because it kind of gives you this like free reign to yes. be like, well, this is, 
yeah, stuff this. I'm gonna, like, I'm not changing shit now. Like, if I've been able to win wearing a seven dollar t shirt and rock and flipping my Jordans and shit or my, my Air Force Ones or whatever it may be, I'm gonna keep doing it. If I'm gonna keep talking this, I'm gonna keep talking this way. Like, why do I need to change yeah, shit now? Because predictability I, shakes them, right? Dude, well, if I let's flip it the other way, if I rolled up and to back to New Zealand now and I come off the plane, I'm in a flipping three piece suit with a little pocket square and shit. And then I come into a, a meeting and be like, hey guys, great to be here. Everyone be like, what the? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Who does he think he is? Being, yeah. Exactly. The point being, they would know that I'm not being authentic to me because that's not how I am. Yes. The second I yeah. do it, I would lose, I would lose all credibility because I'm not being authentic. Now that's not to say I don't like ball out in a suit if it's like respect for the occasion yeah. or whatever, but totally. I just think if you can win your own way, and you then win. So powerful. You've clearly done something right. Like, do you stuff the rest of it? So to answer your question would be, until you got leverage, you can't do shit. Like, yeah, I remember once my before such a thing, a friend of mine said to me, "He's like, yeah, like, you, you know, you you're pretty good at the stuff, but you don't know the how what it actually takes to do it at scale. Like these bigger boys, until right. you've seen inside the machine, you don't have the right to that opinion. Because basically, I was going to this phase of stuff all these big agencies are screwing everyone and all this bullshit blah, blah, blah. i was just like off it right <laughs> and i was right because the outputs yeah. were totally correct people were getting overcharged it was a bullshit he said well until you see inside why they're like that you don't have a right mm. to your opinion mm. and so you know i got on the machine i got to see how and then i was like ah now i see so now i have a lot more empathy and understanding for how these big machines are the way and you know they're the they're, they have systems and processes in place because there's 110,000 employees in 80 different countries yeah. and a bunch of people can hide and a bunch of people can be doing bad shit. It's like, you know, I, I got a lot more empathy and understanding for how big things are big, but then it also made me realize like why they get big and then why they get slow. So yeah. it's like a roundabout way of answering it. That context is so important. I deal a lot with FinTech New Zealand um, businesses and also with the banks and I've been in payments and expense management. So we've had this conversation a lot where FinTechs are going, we can do this in house in two days. Why does it take them two months? I'm like, dudes, like there's, there's reasoning. It sucks, but that's how they can be where they are. I get it. Um, I wanted to pick up on that point around mentoring too, because I'm involved with that with her career. But um, what about some reverse mentoring? You know, this whole piece of there are new graduates coming through, brand new ideas. What do you think about that and embracing? Obviously, they haven't proven themselves yet, but just this different perspective of thought and frame of reference that can be um, quite unbridled because they haven't, they're not cynical about the business world or <laughs> processes yeah, yet. They're, what do they're you think naive as shit because the work yeah, world hasn't finished them in the place yet. <laughs> it's the um, more honest way to put it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's awesome, man. So I kind of think of myself, um, I've got a video about it I'm about to put out actually, it's called like about being the middle child. Like I kind of feel mm -hmm. about, I, like, because I'm, uh, uh, J. Cole put out an album, and one of the lines in this album, in the song called Middle Child, he was just like, um, uh, I was just in the lab with 21 Savage, I'm about to go meet Jigger for lunch. And he's like, he's saying, I was in the studio with 21 Savage, the artist, and now I'm about to go have lunch with Jay Z. Well, Jay -Z, 21 yeah. Savage is like 21, Jay Z is 50. And he's yeah. kind of saying he's that he feels like the middle child because he's this bridge in between these two generations, right? And yeah. so I'm 36 now, so I'm like, I'm not a young spring chicken anymore, but I'm not like washed up and off the foot and off the rooftop. So I'm like, yeah. well, what does um, this middle, what does me being the middle child for this business stuff? Like I still mess with entrepreneurs and I still like young bucks and high schools and all sorts of shit. Like that's where it's at for me forever. Like stuff the old dudes mm. because the, the old dudes have done it. The young bucks need, that's, that's who needs more of it backwards. But what I think anyway is I've been really lucky to be really inquisitive around multiple things at the exact same time, like lots of different shit right now. Like I, I could go deep on 12 or 15 different things and I love all yeah. of it. And there's no reason when someone's yeah. like, Oh, you need to be an expense. Well, I'm like, stuff that what I find yeah, the ninja move for, that for me is I take like learnings or snippets or these kernels from one thing and I can thread them through all these different other worlds. And then it gives me a different insight on, this yeah. thing over here right and then um for young bucks they're just another strand to that because they'll have a different creative idea about something that may be totally disconnected from the rest of my world but it actually fits over here and then so in my brain i'm like yeah. okay 
Boom, boom. So I just think of it like the more you consume at a shotgun approach for me anyway, the more I kind of have a wider perspective on many, many things, which is why if we want to yeah. talk about politics and money or culture, content, creativity, commerce, flipping, whatever the shit is, like I, I'm all in and I can genuinely down. speak on it because like, yeah. cause I love it, you know? And so yeah. I think you get way more upside when you've got the ability to, I call it lenses, like uh, the camera, right? Like you mm -hmm. change the lens and you wear yeah. different, is it like a, is it like a wide angle lens and you see super wide and you see everything on the one, or is it just like laser focus with like a long, you know, telephoto lens that's just zoomed into 200 macro or whatever it is. Right. Like I think of it like, Love when, that you analogy. The, yeah. when you can have the ability to be like, okay, let's just zoom out for a second, chuck the wide angle on. Yeah. All right, now let's zoom out. Now let's look at it this way. And that gives you so much more insight than so much other stuff that exists in, in, in the world because it gives you the, um, when you have perspective, it gives you insights. And when you have insights, you potentially have more ammo. And in business, where it's about brain, if you've mm. got more ammo, you roll the dice a little bit more in your favor, you know? Mm. And that's, that's how I kind of think of it. Once again, back to the chest thing. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that. I know from listening to some of your stuff that you're an energy person. And I go off a lot of my own instincts to um, feel very connected to people. What do you think businesses with toxic environments are doing wrong? I know this is a general question. Um, and how can they turn their type of culture around? Like, where would you start? So I've seen a bunch and I've been through a little bit. Yeah. Not like, you know, I haven't, I haven't run 10,000 person companies or whatever, um, but I've definitely met more than enough Karens. Um, so I think in my, in my view on this is regardless of the cost, gas, the toxicity. Okay. When you have any ounce of like cancerous energy, that's just sucking away mm. value and IP and thought for everything else, stuff it. Like I remember, um, uh, Nathan McCullum, uh, ex uh, cricketer. So he's one of the, um, the yep. bros and he was talking about, we, we had this, um, Power Moves Retreat, I got like, you know, 70, 80 um, entrepreneurs in my kind of inner circle type thing. We went on a hide at the Hilton down in um, Queenstown, went down, Chatham House Rules, and we just kind of like, you know, shot the shit on a bunch of stuff. He had a real interesting take on how he thought about hiring and firing for a, a bad staff member. He goes, okay. if I've got a, he's like, I fire them in a second. I was like, and, and they were like, like, oh, like, what's the reason? He goes, oh, it's a simple formula. Well, if I've got 10 crew on the job and one of them's toxic, will that one person take away 10% of efficiency across the nine of them? And, I, and we were like, right. yep, it's like, cool. So then it makes commercial sense and financial sense and mathematical sense that if you divide the, you know, the hundred percent by the 10 people, and if they decrease by 10%, then clearly if you get rid of them and no one else replaces it, probably you've got more positive than what you had to stuff them. And I was like, holy shit. Wow. That's genius. It's that like, is it's quite just so, genius. <laughs> so then like, let's say if you got, you know, 20 people and two of them are just shit. Then you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. So I've got like 10% of weak links. Now are those 10% of people decreasing the efficiency or the capability or the, the upside of this, th these other 18 by more than 10%? Probably. Okay. So they need to go. <laughs> and yeah. then you work the numbers, right? And then it's like, well, could you capably deal with 3%? Probably. Resource wise, yeah, yeah. Probably not. So then it almost yeah. becomes like a bank doing like a risk analysis of percentage of, of energy decoding it for the team. But basically the fewer people there are and the more toxicity there is by default, they need to go. And is that, so I've had this conversation with a couple of people, you know, being in recruitment, you do this a lot. Is that attitude or is that skill? Attitude. Thank you. Attitude. <laughs> That's what I wanted you to say, but I'm like a hundred percent it's attitude because totally. some of these people with the skill level, they are pricks. And they yeah, totally. ride that leverage and, and apps, storm clouds are not, I, I absolutely agree. Storm think, clouds just ruin everything. Too, is when you get to like one person's toxic energy could kill a room of a hundred if they're smart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're right. Like the, cause if they're really smart in the way they'll like, They'll pick apart this. They'll plant a little How seed they... of doubt around things. They'll do a little thing. And it's, it's like, that's right. It's calculated and manipulated. I've seen this shit. Like I've had a, yeah, one yeah, so scenario. I. There's one situation I'm involved with at the moment. Um, and 
I'm from the outside in and I'm kind of picking out what's happening before it's happening because I know the energy of this one person. I'm like, okay, they're probably going to backdoor this, do right. that. They're probably going to do this, this, this. And once again, it comes down to chess because in chess, you reverse engineering what you think they're going to do based on the energy that they have. And then you can use that to pre-mortem um, incidents. So instead of waiting for it to all turn to shit and then being like, oh yeah, like this is what happened. Pre-mortem at the start of like, if this is going to fail, how's it going to fail? It's like, okay, yeah. you know, I picked one out the one that I'm talking about recently, I picked it out 18 months ago. I was like, this founder and that person are probably going to do this. And then the energy is going to do that. And then da, 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 and then like literally in 18 months, it's just like, like flipping clockwork. Um, so yeah. when you can approach the point is when you can understand people and their drivers and their intentions and how they operate, um, mm. you can pretty much guarantee the outcome of what you think is going to happen. Um, so yeah, yeah that's... I'm, I'm hiring for a small business at the moment and you know that this hire is crucial because it is a small team and they're very collaborative and so I, I get that I've worked in a small team before and I have had great experiences and you know terrible where one terrible hire has ruined everything so yep. I think that, so the next question where you've said you would quote rather have someone with an A player heart B player skill which is what we're touching on Given that, what would be your process and recommendations when recruiting for a hiring manager to find that heart? Did I say that? It sounds real good. Yeah, I that? said that. You had, rather Jeez. have someone with an A player heart, B player skill. I was like, that's awesome. I'm writing that one down. <laughs> Gee, that's pretty good. Yeah, you're that um, good, Robert. You're, you're that no, good. <laughs> no, I, I just, um, my problem that I've got, and this just gets me into trouble a lot, is I don't really think through what I'm saying. I just say, say it and then I forget. Yeah, and then yeah. I forget, I'm just on to the next thing. I'm like, oh, shit. And then sometimes I'll have, like, some bangers that come back, and they're like, that's actually, like, really good. Who said that? That was like, good. Like, yeah. good? <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, but it's, like, 95% average and 5% bangers. So I'm like, yeah, fuck, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> um, and, and but, get, yeah, hiring like, managers are looking for that. How do they find it? I always find, maybe this is just me, that whenever you enter a situation that has power uneven, you never get the real person, yeah. right? Like, let's say I desperately yeah. want a job and it's, you're going to sweep floors at whatever. It's like, oh yeah, I've done the, 10 years of that. Oh yeah, cool. I can do it with my eyes. Cause oh yeah, blah, blah. You're never getting the real person because they have a direct conflict of interest to what they want the outcome to be because you control the power. The you're best getting one their sales I, rep. Yeah, they're getting the assessor. Like, that, that's that comedian shit. And you never can see the truth until that power's away. Until, yeah. let's say, let's say they've got the job and then they don't need to stress anymore because they got it. That's when you see the real person. And in agency world, the classic would be you never get the person's real opinions about anything at the office. And it'd be at Sales Street at flipping three in the morning after they had their six beer. And then they're just like, ah, oh, yeah, fuck, blah, 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 blah. And that's, <laughs> that's them. Right. So yeah. what I'm saying is, well, why not make it flat of like who you are to what you is? That just makes life way easier instead of having like, yeah, I've got a, a friend of mine. He's one of my good mates, but he's very, he's got a public, um, he's, he's, he's publicly known, but he's also privately disconnected from his public image. And I'm like, you almost are like a comedian because you have to go out and you have to yeah. put this front on of like what you think this thing is. And then all you want to do is just, you know, go drink beers with the boys and talk shit. Like it's very, that must stuff you up more so than that. And so the cost of that comes at a cost because yeah. we're truly authentic to you with it. It's like, well, a lot of people aren't going to like that. A lot of people aren't going to engage with it. So then I, I think it's almost the other way of like find a spot that genuinely lets you. Because one thing that pisses me off about corporates mm. and shit is they'll go, bring your whole self to work, be authentically you. And it's like, but that person who's saying that, the majority yeah. of the time, they're not doing that because they've been a chameleon because of the shell that they've got because they're actually a dot, dot, dot. So I'm like, well, if you're faking it, trying to tell me to be real, but then you're faking it. So what are we doing here? Like, and then you'll you judge it too. And you'll judge my yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. And then so I'm kind of like, I'd rather deal with like the authentic crazy and navigate through yeah. the chaos, but at least I know what it is. That's why I think yeah. when you confront with all your bullshit, people already know whether they like you. They already know if you can execute or not. The only thing they don't know is if they can trust you or not. So the majority of yeah. times I'm doing anything, if I sit down with someone and it's the first time thing and they're looking to do something, I already know what the gig is. The gig is, yes. look, if you've decided to take this meeting, you already flip and know what I think about how I'm going to look, talk, act, you know, what I'm going to think about a million different things. 
You know how I'm going to roll. Yeah. And you already know what I've done because you've got Google. So the only thing that this we're trying yeah. to do here is you're just trying to figure out if I can trust Build you or not. Trust. That's yeah. it. And so how I kind of navigate it is I like think of it like eight mile where, and I've said, you know, a couple of times, a little example is, you know, at the end of eight mile with Eminem, the rapper and right. And at the end of it, they have this rap battle and yeah. he wins because he destroys himself well. first yeah. and, he, and he says all the bad yeah. shit about himself. He's like, I'm this, I'm that, I suck, blah, blah, all the rest of it. And then the other person's got no ammunition against them. So he wins. Yeah. He wins. So I think when you confront foot all that crazy shit first and be like, look, I'm super loose and nuts. I'm, but I'm insanely driven and maniacally focused when I want to get a goal because I'm goal driven yeah. for it. Sweet. I'm going to, this is how I'm going to roll. This is how I'm going to act. This is, like, I would rather, if I was anyway, like how, how much more better would a hire be if someone just rolled straight in and be like, look, dude, this is I, I love, this is who I am. I love boozing on like Friday <laughs> nights. I send it and I'll see you on Monday morning, but I'll be here at 7 a.m. and I go flipping hard. I'm going to swear yeah. I get loose. I, like my, my dress is pretty, pretty average, but I'm a weapon on Excel and I can do this. And I could like, yeah. how refreshing would that be instead of like, <laughs> here we go. And this is my thing. Like, cause then instantly in your head, like, like not that weird attracts weird, but like if let's say for arguments, like I was trying to hire a, um, a general manager who is literally nothing like me at all. Right. If mm. I'm that person to try and get to me, the first thing I'd say is like, look, I'm literally the hundred percent exact opposite of you, which is why I'm absolutely yeah. perfect for this. I'm extremely analytical, detail focused. I do this, 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 this. I'm over analytical to the minute, like just whatever. I'd be like, yeah, that, that makes total sense. You know, yeah, and that's you know, I'm, it's not I'm me. Fun enough. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's like, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fun enough that I can, you know, have a few beers with the crew. But at the same time, I'll do damage yeah. and do twenty hours straight when shit needs to get done because I get shit done. I'll be like, yes, and you know, yeah, I think. I always feel it's a bit of a one-way street when people are trying to get hired because they think that everyone above them that's potentially hiring is the same type of thing. It's like, no, yeah, no, yeah, that's, like, yeah. you, you being a junior executive at a, for argument's sake, let's say a, uh, DB breweries might be totally different to Fonterra, right? Yeah. The culture of those two things might be totally different, but you're going for the or same role. And I think or a yeah. hundred percent. And so I just think that <laughs> too much of the time people going for roles, think that every one of that role is the same when it's totally mm. not. So they need to look for the culture fit first, because the last thing you want to do mm. is proactively go somewhere where it's not aligned at all with what you do. And it's just going to create resentment and bullshit. And then next thing you know, you hate it and you bail and leave. That's my yeah. thoughts on it. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's true. I have met people all through my career and, and they're like, you're always so happy. Like, is that a thing? And I'm like, look, I, I would be too exhausted to be anything other than who I am. Like, this is, this is it. You're going to get all of it because there's a lot of energy going on in here. So people that need to do that change of face, um, I don't understand how that happens. Like, you know, I don't, my high highs and my lows are low. Um, and I'll share as much of that of where I'm at. It's not saying you're not experiencing things, but I think you're doing it authentically within the band of who you are. And that, that's the important that's lesson, the, right? The key there though, is just as so many people are not brave enough to say what they actually think, even more people are too scared to show when it's bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I it's had this a Instagram. Sorry, you go. I was going to say, I actually, I had a post I put out in my socials today. So I try and post every day along my Rosie and recruitment and career, just some lessons and insights. And, um, and it's this little cardboard, cardboard red robot man saying, I tried my best with a broken heart and I lost a really big pitch this week. And it was, you know, there's lessons for that. I really wanted it to work out. It didn't. I think I, I still think I would have been amazing. That's fine. Like, but you sit in the disappointment or you learn from it and, you know, go to the next step being your superstar self again. You know, it's, it's, it's that lesson. I think obviously being a sales, I've got resilience. Um, that's something I've learned over also my childhood and some of the challenges and social issues there, but it's, it's sharing that. Yeah. I had some bad shit go down this week, man. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not and always great and fun. <laughs> Totally. And I think that's one of the biggest dangers on social is I feel it's for me anyway. Um, it's a duty that I have now to show all yes. sides of it. So there's been times if it's a gong show, I'll be like gong show. 
because the danger that you have is if you just preach the thing of like the rah rah life's all good gravy 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 yeah. and that's all it is that's not the, the actual truth because there's sometimes it's, it's so a fucking trick show there's sometimes you wake up and your energy's stuffed there's sometimes like you know like yesterday i had one and it was like it was kind of a good day but something was just kind of off like it was like did i waste a bunch of time was this really like cool or what was the i mean i didn't know the answer and so i just said to wife as she got mm. home i was like i'm just gonna go like to the golf range right now i'm just gonna go, go yeah, i'm just gonna go golf. And she's like all right and so i just went out and i walked and not that there was anything sort of wrong but it was more just like this is just what i need to do to reset me right now and then it was came on yeah fine, you know <laughs> Yeah. So no, that's the night it happened. I ran, I'm doing dry July. So I couldn't, I was like the first time in 22 days, I was like, really, I could have done with the drink, but I ran a scaldingly hot bubble bath and I watched some yeah. master chef and I, you know, like just the things that I knew would make me happy. And the next day got back on the phone. First thing, you know, you got to do that. Yep. This is a long question. Um, I'm just really interested, uh, around your thoughts. So in my work, I work with an organization called her career as well. We're working with entry and mid-level women to fix the broken rung and break through those glass ceilings, create connection and support for women. And it's all about climbing the career ladder internally instead of um, entrepreneurs like yourself to executive positions. So some of it's inspiring, but some of it is also, it's really slow to shift. And we feel that. Now, I know one of your messages is hashtag yes to success, and you're working to destroy that tall poppy syndrome. But what other positive lessons will you be providing to your daughters, given they're young, as they grow yep. to develop their resilience for whatever it is that they want to do in life? It's a bloody great question. Um, Thank you. I did work charge. on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's great. I'm just going to put the um, uh, the charger in. Give me one sec. Yeah, sure. Um, so, one, I, I'm not in a place to, I guess, speak on women up the rung later because, A, I'm not a flipping woman. I haven't gone up the rung of any of that stuff. But yeah. as, yeah. a, as a middle-aged father with two daughters under three, um, and growing up, this is always a, such a funny one for me because this is where people kind of get a bit tripped on it around. Like I'm rah-rah with the boysies and I like all that shit, right? But like yeah. I grew up, um, older sister, younger sister, I dad had double brain hemorrhage at 11. So I was essentially man of house 11. My wife is one of three um, sisters and I've got two daughters under three. So it's like, yeah. there's more than enough <laughs> issues well, around my life. There's yeah. more than enough, I, I get that shit. So the thing, so, so funny enough, like a couple of weeks ago, my, my three-year-old, we were, were playing around in the house and, and they um, were trying to do this ballerina thing. So trying to run and do a little, little jump. And then she goes, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, oh, why, why can't you do it? And she's like, oh, yeah, only boys do that. Girls can't do that. And I was like, uh-uh, stop this shit. I was like, no, no, you can do absolutely anything. Look, let's do it together. That's not just, and I just went down this whole thing. And then she then ran and did the, the jump thing. And it was yeah. like, I don't ever want a single ounce of anything to get into her head to make her think she can't do anything at all, ever, full yeah. stop. Like, like even the one she's, um, like yesterday, she was, a couple of days ago, she was like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't, oh, we're trying to, um, we made these cool little, uh, uh, put some paint in these little hang up things that go on the, on, on the window, they sort of hang down and whatever, she put paint on it. And she was trying to get like the small, um, uh, string to go through and she's like I can't do it I can't do it and I was like no no you can't do it yet yeah. you can't do it yet yeah. and so we keep trying trying, trying. and I like I don't want ever to there be a mental handbrake which she puts on herself that isn't put on her at all ever like yes. regardless what it is and so for, for that's I guess and I don't know if it's right or wrong and this is just my truth I guess I don't want the lens of my daughters to think the world of us as this when it's actually that ever yeah right that's like no no no. stuff that it's this oh look at and then yeah. you go because then look at this youtube you know clip of a six-year-old playing the drums that's a it's a mozart you look at a simone bowles doing gymnastics stuff you look at a so-and-so doing oh, whatever yeah. and then that's when you start to see them right and so yeah. to me i i just think it's almost um so that's for the daughters want to come up now within the business context i think now this is just a personal thing and mm -hmm. I'm kind of a little bit, I guess, hypocritical because I probably fit into this age bracket as well. 
I hate on LinkedIn how it's a bunch of 40 to 50 year old white dudes talking the same shit. Right. <laughs> and yes, I, yes. And I, there are so like, cause I've got all these female friends and I was like, why don't you go and unleash on this shit? And they're like, oh, no, 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 it's not, it's not blah, blah, blah. And there's it's this fear thing, It's also so right? time consuming and energy consuming. Yeah. But I remember I was at CES with Michelle Dickinson and Joe, her um, mm -hmm. husband, and we were having dinner and she said a passing comment that stuck with me for, for years so far. She goes, oh, yeah, the problem with this conference, look around. I was like, like mm -hmm. I didn't really see it. It's like, it's 95% yeah. men. And I was like, holy shit, you're right. And he goes, she was like, Minus the promo girls, which are paid for, this is 90% men. And I was like, huh, that's a bit stuffed up. And she goes, the, the, the danger is what will our society look like if 95% of all, if all our decisions are made by 95% of men? And I was like, holy shit, you're right. We're going to have like, this is, this isn't what our society actually represents. So I mm. think there's a dangerous echo chamber that happens on LinkedIn where if it's, let's say for yeah, argument's right. sake, it's. 95% men age, not just white men, but the ones that I've seen has predominantly been. Let's just for argument's sake, it's 95% men the age between 40 and 60 that mm. control 90% of the messaging, the media, the narrative, the ideas, the thoughts, the opinions of what you consume and, and that you think is the build of business. I see LinkedIn, I see business. I then see 90, but I see, I just get flooded with the majority of all the stuff sooner or yeah. later that starts to take an impact on it. And I think that's whack. Yeah. I think it's bullshit. Subconsciously and it's there. hundred percent. And, uh, and I prove this when I moved to Canada and I was living there snowboarding and I don't give a shit about ice hockey. I couldn't care about ice hockey. Like it was just, I was like, <laughs> whatever. It is on okay, all day, yeah. every day. It is it is ninety yeah. percent of the the oxygen is talking about flipping hockey. I swear to God, by the flipping third month, I was like coming home early from shredding to sit down and make sure the Canucks are playing <laughs> so and so, and I can sort of see it. I'm like, how did this? Shit how did happen? this happen? <laughs> and it happens because they won by yeah. default because they owned up all the attention in my in my headspace. Exposure, so answer, yeah. So to answer it, I think that there just needs to be more and more braver female voices and Maori voices and Pacifica voices and LGBTQ voices and any voices that's not what we've already seen because the danger I feel yeah. in society is if everyone thinks that society is based off this one lens, mm. then that's actually not a true representation of what we have. And then that causes because conflict. Because they try because and fit themselves in that. Yeah. hundred percent. And so that's what I would say as well. So any, any female or those minorities, whatever that are in, in power or position, use that to flex and create as many different breadcrumbs for others as possible to try and find. That's what I feel. I feel yeah. it's a duty for them, which is why I do yeah. so much of the stuff I do. I feel it's a duty that I have to do. Yeah, no, I agree. And this is why one of the reasons why I created this podcast, I'd been a co-host on our Her Career podcast. Um, but when Holly and I caught up recently, we both discovered we were writing articles for Business Desk New Zealand. So they've got a new section coming out. It's coming out this week. So I'm writing on recruitment. Holly's writing on lobbying. And I was just like, this is freaking awesome. You've got two Māori women who are, you know, talking about really important issues within New Zealand and giving SMEs advice and steps and practical, um, yeah, outcomes for business. And hopefully if, if we can support them and do that and keep writing these articles and be at the forefront and share out learnings and experiences, it can widen that door a little bit. hundred percent. That's good. And whether it's right or wrong, it's, it's, it's your truth, but it's a different lens and we just need more lenses, you know? Yeah. I agree. So we've got kind of seven minutes left. I'll, I'll grab one more question and then um, go to the end. So I think this will be an interesting one to hear from you. If you could make one change to support SME New Zealand businesses right now in New Zealand, what would it be? Genuine collaboration for education and growth. Every small, the majority nice. of small business owners are stuck in their own bubble of their own world yeah. with everything 360 consuming them instead of realizing the person next to them who's a small business is doing the exact same thing. And the person that's left yes. them is doing the exact same thing. And so you've got this fragmented alignment where there are these thousands yeah. or hundreds of thousands of these small micro bubbles with everyone in their own bubble going through the same issues of HR, staffing, marketing, cash flow, whatever. Because as soon as you're a small business, 
it's all on you. You're the end to end 360 workshop and you know you may be awesome at accounting but you may suck at sales you may be awesome at sales but you may suck at back-end admin you may suck at logistics you may suck at whatever it is and mm. weirdly enough people don't realize that one plus one actually equals three you know because yeah. when you're one to yourself it's zero because you just, it's all you know when it's one plus one it's like oh then you know that and i know this oh there's something new that's Idea. value when there's, when there's value created then that helps everyone so i think it's the overarching thing that I've th I think within all these stuff that we're talking about, whether it be, you know, young bucks going for jobs or, or females trying to get louder in the marketplace or small business owners, it's bravery. It comes down to bravery. It comes around yeah. internal bravery to either ask a question and feel stupid. Like I was in a meeting just before I was, um, you know, someone, someone said some word I didn't, xenophobia. I didn't know what that shit was. And yeah. then in the middle of the interview, I'm like, hey, can you just, like, what does that shit mean? They're like, oh, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And we just keep going on with it, right? But yeah. if I didn't ask, I don't know. And they keep talking about this no thing. Context. I don't know what they're talking about. And I'm like, sounds good, bro. Mean. And so <laughs> like, I don't know what that shit meant. Um, yeah. But it, it's the bravery, like to have internal bravery to ask the dumb question or to actually just like say what you feel or to, you know, just play the game differently. And people just don't do that. People just would rather sit there and stay quiet yeah. and the same shit happens. So it's like, you know, reliable data equals reliable results. Same shit equals the same shit. Yeah. Leveraging networks. I, I, you're right. Like we have them here in New Zealand in a way that other countries are envious of, and we're just not using them in the best way they possible. Feel shame. They feel shame yeah, to I not know so. the answer. They feel shame to yeah. say, Oh, I've got like, I did this one, um, this little power moves forum thing. I got together 10 of my buddies, um, in business and uh like probably like some of the, a bunch of the boys right got them through and we did chatham house rules thing and one of the biggest issues that actually came up in chatham house rules was how they can navigate being a better manager for female staff now right. where else would they yeah. go to try and talk about that shit? like yeah at the pub oh how do i deal with sally and the shit's just going on <laughs> oh, i'm trying to it's like they're, they're talking about oh you got 20 bucks on the game this weekend oh mean <laughs> like they're not talking about that shit. and so yeah I just think they need to, I think any small business owner in New Zealand needs to realize that everyone else who's running a small business doesn't have it figured out. They've all got weak spots yeah. and they've all got shit that they don't know what's up. And funnily enough, if you can create more forums where you can actually have open conversation and dialogue about what's actually going on, you may be able to help each other because what you're awesome yeah. at, but they don't want to, they don't want to, they're fearful to sound like they don't know what they're doing. Or they don't know what's yeah. up and that's okay because we all don't that's the flipping point if you did you'd be flipping you know a thousand employees and charging away but if you just take it along small you don't know everything even the big guys don't know everything so that yeah. would be just enough bravery to to ask the dumb question to stand what you know my mom always used to say you know if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything actually knowing what you nice. stand for done that is a great way to end this. I know you had a hard finish at um, 55. I'm just going to stop the recording so that we can capture it before you log off, if that's okay. But um, I want to thank you so much for your time. That was amazing. Sure. Hopefully that 